What's up YouTube? Today we're going to show you how to ship a reptile. Being a lot of reptiles you can't always find in your state, you might need to get them shipped to you. Or you might want to become a breeder and this will show you how to do it. So first off, you have your box. We tape the bottom. Then you're going to add the styrofoam and you're going to want to use three quarter inch. And then it's designed to go around like so. Pretty simple. You wiggle it in to make sure it all fits. Voila. And then, you know, you got one more for the top. So you got the side set up, and you're going to want to do air holes. Either for one, the animal, you know, needs to breathe. And then two, if you use a heat pack for that to work, you need oxygen. So we're going to start off, we're drilling quarter inch holes. We're going to do one on each side. And then there's two main things to ship a reptile in. You got reptile bags that kind of look like little pillowcases with ties. That, you know, they're thin enough that there's air that can go in or oxygen, but thick enough where the reptiles can't go out. And then you got deli cups. And you got these. They got, you know, punch holes around the side. That way they can get a ton of oxygen. And you got to make sure you get the one that, you know, fits in your container. And then for the shipping bag, you know, you put the animal in. You tie it with this. And then we'll show you later. You put a zip tie around the top after the tie. Just to make sure that your knot doesn't slip out and the animal gets loose in the box. So then the next thing you're going to want to know is temperature regulation. So you have the main common things. You got phase packs and heat packs. There's also cold packs, but even phase packs would work also like heat packs. You put them in the freezer, then they'll stay cold. What's nice about these, these are designed to keep the box about 74 they'll go either solid or a liquid state depending on the you know temperature in the box it will try to regulate it and level it out so sometimes you might have to use a heat pack in one of these or just one of these it all depends on the shipping conditions from where you're at where the animal is going and along the way and also with heat packs there is different lengths so right here, we got a 40-hour one, which is more than enough for shipping reptiles, you know, because normally, you know, it's within, you drop it off the night before, it's there the next day, you know, so 18 hours, even 24, you know, would cover it. But having a little extra in case FedEx messes up, that does happen, and, you know, it takes an extra day, you cover your butt. They also even have, like, these ones are 96-hour ones, and these will actually get to a warmer temperature and last longer. So we use these for insect shipping, but some people also use these when it's colder out. That way it will still be safe enough for the reptile to ship. But for all that, we're going to send you a guideline right here to show you you know what's recommended by the companies that you can ship reptiles through there's you know reptile express redline shipping ship your reptiles reptiles to you and there might even be more that i'm not but that will give you a good start we'll put links to those in the description now we're going to show you how to package the animal so right here we got a baby that's going out it's in shed, so it doesn't look the fanciest, and doesn't like to sit still, but you get a good idea. So we already have paper towels in here for to absorb any liquid and add some cushion for it. So we let it go in. 
Now we're going to go below. We're going to make sure you don't get the tail in. You know, you don't want to tie a tail so it loses the tail in its trip. You know, it's not the most exciting being shipped across the country anyway. So we're going to tie this. Sure, she's still lower. Yep, got it tied. We're gonna do a bow, make it a little easier. We got a zip tie. We're gonna do on top of that so it doesn't slide up. So you got your animal secured in there. I'm going to carefully lift it up. We already got a phase pack in the bottom and then some packing paper for cushion on top of that. So then we're going to carefully set her in. Position it nice and careful. And then we're going to add another go with a half sheet of packing paper on top of that. So now on this, we tape the phase pack on top. This is what you do with a heat pack. And on the middle of your heat pack, you'll see a red line that you do not want to cover with the tape. Otherwise, it won't work. And you're going to want to tape it really good. We probably would have been fine just setting it on top, but I didn't want the extra pressure on the animal, so we taped it up here. And we got a good amount of packing in there, so we're just going to gently put it in. Then you close it up. And then you tape it. Now, I've seen multiple ways on this. Some people will do like an H tape, and we'll show you that. But I like to make sure that it's going to stay closed and not come open. You know, tape's inexpensive. So for your H tape, you know, basically you got the one going across there. Then you put one on top, fold it over. This will make it a little more airtight for what? I mean, you got holes for air, so I don't know. You got your other one here. And you fold it, and voila, you got the H. And then you put your shipping labels on the side or on top, and then the other labels on the side, which we'll show you. So, right here, we're going to show you a picture of the top of the box, and we crossed out the person's address. But here, you can see where to put the label and the other things you have to put on it. That way, Fish and Wildlife does not get mad at you because you don't want them mad. And sometimes they will open a box. So if you have the label over the middle, then they'll have to cut it and then FedEx might get mad. So I hope this was helpful. And remember to check out the links below for even more shipping tips. Thanks for stopping by. Please like and subscribe.